standing here to welcome you all to this um, hip top conference titled who is on the lost side on behalf of my pastor and the man of God and my father in the Lord amen is my father in the Lord my father in this vision I had the word first, the word of God first from his mouth. So you are all welcome to this conference in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome to this conference. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, I want to deliver my welcome speech to you all. And I plead with every one of us to pay attention to the welcome speech. And the speech is titled, A Sure Foundation. A Sure Foundation. That is the title of the welcome speech. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, let's sing in times like this. In times like this, that is hymn number 56. Am I right? Yes, sir. In times like this.
number 29, the old rugged cross. <laughs>
someday for a crown. Amen. Did you come to this meeting with a burden in your heart? Are you sure? You came to this conference with a burden. Whatever the burden is, the burden of sin, the burden of unforgiving spirit, the burden of troubles of life, the academic problems. Right now, if you came here with your heart, as we sing these songs now, those burdens will be lift, lifted out of your hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. In number 93, burdens are lifted up at Calvary. Get ready for your burden to be lifted up. Every burden, burden of possession, sinful burdens, get ready for those burdens to be lifted up. Hymn number 93. And sing the song with your whole heart. At the end, you see, your heart will be light. The problems will be taken out of your life. Amen. from stanza one one two there's a few with sorrows and care has a lonely and dead but I leave the dark Jesus is well
ya makuli Ya mwaka makuli begin now to pray and all those bodies be lifted out of your life you shouldn't carry those bodies Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you have made for our well-being, spiritual well-being, physical well-being, academic well-being, material well-being, and professional and financial well-being. Father, we thank you because burdens are lifted up at Calvary. All the bodies, the bodies of life, great Jehovah, by thy great power, those bodies will be lifted up from the life of these young men and women in the name of Jesus. Then our girl, speak to us now. And let the miracles, the greatest of all miracles, the miracle of salvation, let them take place in every life, in every soul, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you've answered. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. And amen.
The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6. Are you there? The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, reading from verse 46 to 49. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid a foundation on a rock and when the flood arose the streams beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 29. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floors came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floors came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the words of Jesus Christ is a word of truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He was with God at the beginning. And the world was made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In Jesus Christ was life. And the life became the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. Jesus is the truth, is the wisdom of God. He is the power of God. And he is the light of all men that come into this world. 
And few, if you receive the life in him, there is life in Jesus Christ. And that life will become a light on your path. So you will no longer walk in darkness. And there is no power from Satan, principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. None of them can overcome that power, overcome that light that is in you, which you got from Jesus Christ. I told you that the theme for this welcome address is a sure foundation. Can I hear you say it? Only a few people. A sure foundation. Again. What is foundation? The dictionary defines foundation as a solid base. It can be natural or concrete on which a building is raised. A solid base on which a building or a thing is raised up. And without foundation in anything, those things will collapse. Foundation means a solid base on which a thing is raised, on which a building is raised. Any building without a solid base will collapse, will fall. When the billows of life, when the winds and the floors will beat upon that house, it will fall because the foundation was founded on a sand. There's a song we used to sing. All of the ground is seeking sound. All of the ground is seeking sound. I believe in Jesus, the only rock of ages. All of the ground is seeking sound. A road. Yeah. There are a lot of foundations in the world. But it is only one that can be called a sure foundation. When you build your life on that foundation, you can never fall. All the winds, the evil ties will come against you because your life is built up on that solid foundation you cannot fall. There are a lot of foundations and in our own Christian life there is only one foundation. And there are a lot of foundations in Christendom and in the world today. People of different creeds People of different ideologies. But there's only one foundation that is sure.
That's what I'm talking to you about. The foundation, Jesus Christ, is the foundation. He is the rock. Jesus is the rock. All his works are perfect. All his ways, judgment. A God of righteousness without iniquity, just and right is he. Jesus Christ he is the foundation of Christianity. Every person that is called a Christian without building on the foundation that has been laid, that person cannot stand. That person will fall. Because he has built in another foundation other than Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 3 I read verse number 11. First Corinthians chapter 3 Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For no foundation can any man lay than what is led than Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. And if you build your life on him, you can never fall. And you cannot fail in every field of endeavor. If you build your life, on that solid foundation which is Jesus Christ you will never fall and there will be no failures in your life you will not experience failures because your life is built on a solid foundation which is Jesus Christ and you came to this conference. And if your life is not built on that solid foundation, you will collapse. And you will see yourself a failure. And you will meet with disaster. Because you build on a sandy foundation. And God is telling you all today that you should build your life on a solid foundation. And that foundation is Christ Jesus. The son of the living God. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son Jesus. And whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. Whosoever built his life upon that foundation shall never perish or fall. Every other foundation from any religion, from any false prophets, from Pentecostals that is not built on Jesus that religion that prophet and the people shall surely fall 
You are here this weekend so that your life can be built on a solid foundation. I ask you, do you want your life to be built on a solid foundation? And I want my life to be built on that solid foundation that stands the tide of times. As a student, as a graduate, you have to build your life on that solid foundation, which is Christ Jesus. Don't join the bandwagons who build their lives on fashion, on music, on the Pentecostal jargons, on the false prophets. You are here so that your life can be built on that foundation. For no other foundation can any man on earth lay, except the one that has been led? In Christianity, the foundation on which you start your life as a Christian is called repentance. Repentance from sin and from every dead work in your life. Repentance from evil, from occultism. Repentance from marine spirits. Repentance from adultery, fornication. Repentance from lesbianism and homosexualism. Repentance from fraud and kidnapping. Repentance from armed robbery, from stealing. And quarreling, repentance from abortion and all the evil around. That is the foundation of a Christian life. Repentance from every form of worldliness. Repentance from every evil. That is the foundation of a Christian life. And that is a foundation on which you will build your life. After this, you are building your life on a sinking sand. And when the waters of affliction will beat upon that house, when the flood and the billows will beat upon that house, you will fall like a pack of cars. The foundation of Christianity is repentance from every evil, from masturbation, from lies, gossiping, malice, envy, jealousy, exam malpractice, Sorting out. You need to repent from all these sins. And if you do, that begins the beginning of your Christian life. Repentance from sin. Jesus came. His first preaching was on repentance. John the Baptist, the forerunner, of Jesus Christ, the man that introduced Jesus to the world, his preaching was on repentance. On the Pentecost day, when the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles, their first preaching was on repentance. When Paul the Apostle began his ministry, his first, his first preaching was on repentance. For they know that is a foundation 
that every person must have before he or she is called a Christian. Before you can be called a Christian, you must build on the foundation of repentance from sin and from every dead work in your life. Without it, you are not a Christian. And you are building on a sinking, sinking sand. On a sand. Praise the Lord. Whether you are 100 years old, coming to church, without this foundation in your life, you are not a Christian. And when you build your life on this foundation, you can never fall. Praise the Lord. There will be no backsliding. You can never fall. People fall because they build their lives on sandy foundations. And when the cares of this world will beat upon that house, it will fall because it was not built on a solid foundation. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4 to show you the Lord Jesus Christ started his ministry by preaching repentance from sin. And if you have not repented from your sin, you are not a Christian. You can be here. You can join any Christian group for 100 years. You are not a Christian. To be a Christian, you must lay your hand, your life, on that solid foundation. Matthew chapter 4, read from verse 1 to 17. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him upon a pinnacle of the seat of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the glory of them, he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou shalt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. 
Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness, so great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was his first preaching. When he began his ministry. And he knows that is the most important thing in life. To have a solid foundation. He said, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus is telling you to repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. That's what he's telling to all these campus students. Repent. And all your visitors. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus, he didn't preach prosperity, breakthrough, he preached the most important thing. Repentance from sin. From every sin you are into. Repentance is not done in piecemeal. It's wholesome. Total turning away from sin. But what we see these days Many preachers all over the world, the word repentance is not in their dictionary. In the campuses, you see the Christians there, they tell you that masturbation, homosexualism, and lesbianism is not a sin. And there are many churches Say a man can marry a woman. Bishops in many churches. They have introduced gay marriage all over the world. And it's being championed by the Western nations. They tell you God does not care. But the watchman, Catholic, Charismatic renewal movement is an instrument God has raised up to preach this gospel of repentance to every man. And thus said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. To bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious. In his eyes. And my God. Shall be my strength. And he said. It is a lighting. That thou shouldest be my servant. To raise up. The tribes of Jacob. 
and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. That is a ministry God has graciously given to the watchman to raise the tribe of Jacob that is down. Christendom, the whole Christendom is the tribes of Jacob. And people from other faiths are the preserved. There are some people in those other faiths that are sincere to God. But they can't go to heaven except Jesus Christ is preached to them. The mandate we have received is a worldwide mandate. And we depend on these campus students who will go to all those parts of the world and be allied to the Gentiles. And so watchman stands on the truth. We have a solid foundation. Our pastor, the visionary, had a solid foundation on which he stood and built us up. And every man, every woman, every youth, every boy and every girl that believed the truth and when you receive the truth, you begin to propagate it. So, watchman is a solid foundation if you want to go to heaven. These churches, they don't preach repentance again from sin. Immorality is fun. They call it enjoyment. Lesbianism. Some of them preach that masturbation is not a sin. Those pastors are satanic agents that want to destroy souls. But we have come to the right place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Watchman is the right place. That gives you the truth. Wholesale. Without diluting it. Gives you the wholesome truth. And if you believe. And act on this truth. You shall be made free. From sin. From sicknesses and diseases. From every evil. And so Jesus. Preached repentance. Look up. When he passed through the region of Zablon and Naphtali by the sea coast, those people, before Jesus passed that place, they were dwelling in darkness. They were dwelling in the shadow and region of death. But when Jesus passed that way, the people that dwelled in darkness saw great light. The people that walk in the shadow and region of death, a light sprung up. And it's going to happen to you today. You have been dwelling in darkness and in the region of shadow of death. Jesus is passing this way in this conference to, today. Is passing. Is going to shine in your life so that all the darkness in your life will depart. It's going to shine in your soul. You were dwelling in the fear and in the shadow and region of death. 
But when Jesus passes across you, if you believe this gospel that I'm preaching, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life became the light of men. A light that shineth in darkness. No darkness can overcome it. Praise ye the Lord. If you receive Jesus Christ today into your life, as you move out from this place, no darkness, darkness of sin, all the cultism in the school, all the marine spirits, all the kidnappers, all the ritual murderers, all the armed robbers, they can't overcome you because the light is in you. And the world that was in the beginning was made flesh and he dwelleth among us. That word of God is Jesus. Jesus is passing this way today, today. Jesus is passing this way, is passing this way today. It's passing. Receive him. And the darkness of your life will depart. The sorrows of your life will depart. The fear of death will depart. Jesus is passing this way. Sing with me. To yeah, yeah. It's passing. You know, in times like this, we need a savior. The whole world is lying in great wickedness. Only those that have Jesus in their life will survive this evil in the world today. Only those that have their life built on that solid foundation can survive the onslaught of the devil today. And God has brought you here, praise the Lord, that Jesus will pass into your life. The fears will depart. Gospel of repentance. And John the Baptist Preach repentance. John chapter 3. Read from verse 7. The gospel of St. Matthew. Chapter 4. No. Chapter 3. From verse 7. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 3. We read from verse. We read from verse 5. They went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. And we are baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the world to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within you, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones 
to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid on the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not good fruit is hand down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me he is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The baptism of John, he preached repentance. When they heard his voice, crying in the wilderness, prepare the word of the Lord, fill the bodies, make his way straight, and many came. He said, He called them brood of vipers, who has told you to run away from the rot that is to come. And he's telling you today to run away from the rot that is coming. He preached repentance. The apostles on the Pentecost day preached repentance. As the apostles, chapter 2, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, we read from verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Ah. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What did he preach? Say, repent. From all your sin. And receive the promise of the Father. And I'm telling all these campus students, undergraduates, and those who are graduated and the people they invited, whether you have been in the church for 50 years, it doesn't matter. Repent! And let the blood of Jesus remit all your sins without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. That's why Calvary is very important. All that we are contrary to your well-being, Jesus took it out of the way and nailed them on the cross of Calvary and triumphed over them for you and me. Calvary. That's where the blood of the Lamb was shed. And John the Baptist, when he introduced Jesus, said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. But all preachers that tell you breakthrough, prosperity, promotion, they have deceived you. And those preachers are building on a sand. And so, the souls that are built on the sand cannot stand the tide of times. The evil tide, they can't stand it. Repent from every sin in your life. 
from examma practice. Sorting. Students don't want to read again. What we have these days is illiterate as graduates. First class, second class, or upper, but they can't spell their name or their course. They can't make a correct sentence. What made it so is exam practice. Sorting. The men give money. The girls give their body to the lecturers. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. All those in peer system and the choir. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Nobody knows about tomorrow. But only God. Your repentance is now. Don't procrastinate tomorrow. After I have graduated, after I have married, after I have married the wife of my choice and the man of my choice, I will repent. You may live to see no tomorrows in your life. Many have done that, but there are no more in the world and entered into hell. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Repent. That is a foundation that is sure. A sure foundation. And many young youths that recruited them for kidnapping. Repent. All the kidnappers. For the kingdom of God is at hand. All the halos, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. All the fashion freaks, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And when you do that, you are building on a solid foundation. You have been in the church all these years and nothing has happened in your life. You sing in the choir. You are an usher. You are a prayer warrior. But you are not a Christian. What you receive is not faith, Christian faith. What you receive is what? Religious inoculation. Can I hear you see that? Again. Many have been in the church for many years. But they have not repented. They learned how to sing. They learned how to clap their hands. They learned how to shout hallelujah. But they have not re repented. The reason is because they received religious inoculation which when the truth is coming to them it will parry the truth away and what is inoculation inoculation means introducing a disease into an organism through transmitting the agent that causes that disease into that organism. That's what inoculation is. The act of putting a little part of the disease into your body, like we have in uh, tuberculosis. They inoculate you. They take the agent that causes that thing, inoculate you, so that agent we form a formidable defense against the virus of that tuberculosis when it comes to attack you. Have you understood now? Have you understood what I said? All this inoculation is the act of introducing a disease 
into your body, into an organism, through transmitting the agent that causes that disease into you. So it will form a formidable defense against that disease when it comes. So many people in the whole world, including you, what you have received is religious inoculation, not repentance from sin. Praise the Lord. You are not a Christian. What you receive is religious inoculation. So that when the truth that you save your soul comes, that inoculation you have received we form a formidable defense to parry away the truth. That's why you are always rising and falling. Rising and falling. Because what you receive is not Christianity, is not regeneration. What you receive, religious inoculation. Hey, when I come, I love how you people sing. You have received it. I love how you clap. I give testimony. God can do something for you. He gives the testimony. You don't assume that you are a Christian by that testimony. And if you go like that, you have received religious inoculation. And the truth, when it comes to save your soul, that thing will wage it. That's why many men and women, sisters and brothers, use, as we came here, as sure as clapping and sounding, and you are vibrating, Vibrating because of your youthful energy. What many of you have received is religious inoculation, but not salvation. Today, you call it quit. With religious inoculation, in the name of Jesus. So that you go home sound. You know it. Making a practice of sin. You didn't receive the faith. If the seed of God is in you, you cannot sin because the seed of God is in you. When the grace of God that brings salvation to all men, teaching them to deny every form of ungodliness and worldly loss, lost, to live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. While we wait for that great coming of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave his life that we might be redeemed from every iniquity. And purify unto himself a peculiar people that are zealous. Unto every good work. Have you been purified? Those that have received religious inoculation, they are not purified. Jesus is coming for a peculiar people. The rapture is around the corner. Are you peculiar? Don't leave this conference without being saved. Put away. All the religious inoculation you have received. Another way to describe religious inoculation is when somebody is filled with a set of ideas and the person is filled with that set of ideas. That is religious inoculation. But not filled with genuine Christianity. Not filled with genuine repentance from sin. I love you all. These are my brothers, young brothers, and my young sister. I love you all. But I'm telling you the truth that will set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That is a welcome message to you. Building on a sure foundation. Not building on these religious uh, jargons. False prophets all over the world. In Nigeria, every person is a man of God. 
If you are filled with those their ideas, you have received religious inoculation. You see that, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you are not a Christian. And you see those people in the campuses. You see them who claim to be a Christian and speak in tongues, and they feel that are Christian, they are not Christians. What they receive is religious inoculation. If I end here, I pass the message. Your blood cannot be on my head or the head of the servant of God because we have delivered the message to you. Check your life. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian girl. I sing in the choir. People think say singing in the choir makes somebody a Christian. People think say preaching as I'm preaching. It is not this preaching that makes me a Christian. When the devil said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, Turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, I was not made a son of God by turning stones into bread. I was made a son of God by a decree. In Psalm 2, praise the Lord. He was made a son of God by a decree. Let's read that Psalm 2. Psalm 2, we read from verse 1. Why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that seated in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then he shall speak unto them. In his rod and vex them in his soul displeasure. Yet have I said, My king, upon my holy hill of Zion, I declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. That's what the decree that made Jesus Christ the Son of God, not the changing of the stones into bread. Many people think today, by doing miracles, they are children of God. No! You be a miracle worker, but you are not a child of God. What makes you a child of God is not the miracle you perform. It's not the preaching you are preaching. What makes you a child of God is total repentance from every sin. Faith towards, repentance towards God. And faith in the Lord Jesus Christ on what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. You repent towards God. God is merciful. He is gracious. His mercy is growing here now. Whosoever received that mercy becomes a child of God. It is not by singing in the choir. By having a lovely voice, by being in the PA system, or it is not being a, you come to the watchman, say, I'm a watchman. It is not watchman that makes you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is genuine repentance from sin, receiving Jesus Christ into your soul as your personal Lord and Savior, and having the earnest of the Spirit of God as a mark of ownership upon you. That's what makes you a child of God. It's not by preaching. Preaching doesn't make me a child of God. What makes me a child of God is repentance from those sins and faith in the Lord Jesus. Christ Amaram Ibu Chuku Jehovah Jireh He can do anything He will change your life today So, 
Are you ready? To receive him. What makes you a child of God because you sing in the choir? Because you receive miracle. Don't you know that the goodness of the Lord leads you to repentance? When God does a good in, for you, that good should lead you to repentance. It doesn't mean that we are a child of God by that good. Jesus didn't become a child of God by turning the stones into bread. He became a child of God by a decree. Say, thou art today, thou art my son. Today. That's a day you become a child of God. That was a day Jesus became a child of God. Begotten child of God. And there must be a day you sitting there will become a child of God. That day is today. That day is today. Nobody sincere will escape today from being a child of God. The devil tempted Jesus with all the goods of the goodies of this world. Say, if you just fall down, say, get behind me, Satan. And this is what you have used to deceive the whole world. Money. These churches, they think, say, by having money, they have become the children of God. Say, they are miserable and naked. I love you people. And I want the best for you. When I saw you the day I came here, I said, how will all these people go away from here without having any relationship with God? And I prayed. I woke up after one today to begin to pray for you. After all, Pray solely for the people that attend this conference. For the well-being of their souls. For the salvation of their souls. And for the things that accompany salvation. There are things that accompany salvation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of that kingdom. Other things be given to you. If from today you begin to seek that kingdom and you got that kingdom and the righteousness of that kingdom, the moment you leave, depart here to your schools, things begin to unfold. There will be a great metamorphosis in your life. <laughs> and repentance from sin is the beginning of all metamorphosis. That great transformation that will be seen and noticed by people. That's what I prayed for you all. As you live here, people that knew you before in the campus say, Is it this lady? Is it this man? Say, Nami. <laughs> so that is that. The way, when you repent, the way is narrow. Narrow is the way that leads to life. But broad is the way that leads to damnation. And many people follow it. Only few follow that narrow way. It's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. For many are the turns on the
No, no. I'm bright in the <clears throat> It's not an easy road. There are trials and troubles, but many are the dangers we meet. But Jesus guides and keeps. scripture. If I continue to preach now, we never depart here from here. Because this sure foundation is the totality of the gospel message. It's the totality of what Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. This repentance, that is the totality of the entire gospel. And if you miss it, you are missed out. Amam nozo di wara wara agam neso uwara ya Alleluia agam neso ya I will follow the narrow gate. Alleluia, Mamluz, Odiwara, Wara. It's a narrow road that leads to life eternal. Alleluia. Hallelujah. All these, my beloved children, the road is narrow. Walk in it. Walk inside the narrow road and continue. Jesus is there with you to brighten the journey, to, to lift all the bodies in your life and all the cares of life 
is there to supply all your needs. Walk in the narrow gate that leads to life eternal. Eternal life. Eternal. Yeah. God. You can rise up your feet. Yeah. You can pray on now before I read the last scripture. Pray on. Tell God you want to live eternal life. Discard all the religious inoculation in your life. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Before we pray for that, take your Bible and go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Read from verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. <clears throat> Repent ye therefore and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after 
as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Look up. You see the condition. Only those that are converted and turned to the Lord, only those that are genuinely born again, Shall God, shall refreshment, restoration come from the presence of God unto that individual? Because God sent his son Jesus to bless you by turning away every one of you from your sin. This time is a time of refreshment from the presence of God. Only those that have turned away from their sins will receive the refreshment. Another word for refreshment there is restoration. Spiritual restoration, physical restoration, marital restoration, academic restoration, financial restoration, professional restoration. Only those that will turn away from their sin, restoration will come from the presence of God. Because he has sent his son to bless you in turning away from all their sins. Now is the time. Those who want refreshment from the presence of God. Remember the refreshment comet after you have turned away from your sins, refreshment will come from the presence of God, not from man. Man's refreshment is temporal, but refreshment from God is total. And so if you want to do, have that, I want you to step up here boldly in faith. Say, I want refreshment from the presence of God. If you want refreshment by totally turning away from your sin, that is the condition. Refreshment shall descend from the presence of the Lord and nobody can take away those things from you. Turn away from the sin of lust, immorality, fornication, adultery, robbery, bribery, cheating, stealing, refreshment will come from the Lord. Only those that want refreshment from the Lord, whether you have been here for one million years, it doesn't matter. Begin to pray as he comes. Those that want refreshment, Dennis, do you? Mm, no, Nick. Oh yeah. Because God has sent Jesus to bless you in turning away from your sins, you receive blessings from God. Those who are still there, you don't want refreshment from God? Stay there. Refreshment will come today. 
If you want refreshment from God, what are you a pastor? Come. Come. Pastor children, come. Corinthians, come. And build your life on the solid foundation. Campus pastors, come. Ushers come and begin to pray. Refreshment from we come from the presence of God in every area of your life. Visitors come. God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Come. That's a welfare welcome package. Build your life on a solid foundation. Don't be ashamed. Come. Don't miss this day. Opportunity is a jealous mistress that withdraws its favor from an unresponsible suitor. Come! All those in the is come! And be refreshed. Come and be refreshed. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name because I felt for. Worship your name, Emmanuel is your name, great Jehovah, I bless you. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, great Father. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, man of war. Oh, blessed be God for this wonderful salvation. Oh, message. I bless you for this. This sure word of salvation. Oh, my Father, what a, what a foundation. What a sure foundation. Lord, I bless you. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, dear Father. I bless you, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Quietness. This is the most beautiful droid in the whole wide world. Jesus, our master, came from heaven to give us repentance and salvation. The highest of all the messages in the world. Pray this prayer after me, all of you are uh, seriously praying, and they who have come out on a frantic note that you give your life to Jesus and never to go back. Lord Jesus, I surrender all my life to you. Change me to the fullest. I hate Satan and sin from now till Jesus comes. I denounce every evil, all evil activities of this world, 
every sin, everything that is devilish, I reject them. Lord, change me and turn me upside down to your glory. That this day, this message, this program will be a thing I cannot forget. Lord Jesus, thank you for leaving heaven and coming to me. Thank you for coming from heaven to die for me, to save me from going to hell. Lord, I promise you, I will not go back to Satan again. All my old sins, I shall not go back to live again. Lord Jesus, as you transform my life here, I will follow you lifetime. Lifetime. I reject you, Satan. I reject you, worldliness. I reject you, sin. I reject hell. I divorce Satan. I divorce sin. I divorce hell. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior forever and ever. Jesus will reign in me. Jesus will rule in me. Lord Jesus, possess me. Spirit, soul, and body. Every blessed day will I serve you. I make a covenant with the Lord Jesus. From today until Christ comes, I shall serve the Lord. I shall follow the Lord with all my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, give me a new life. Father, put me the power of salvation. By the power of your word, which I have received forever and ever, I will follow you until I go to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Mighty God, all the people that came out to hear, Lord, whether they be believers before or they are becoming believers for now, Father, I ask you, Lord, transform them with a everlasting transformation of your word we have heard. Lord Jesus, let your power permeate every soul that all of us here will depart and come from sin and from iniquity. Sin in the villages, sin in the campuses, sin anywhere. All the power of sin, let it wither away in Jesus' name. Let this new life remain forever in Jesus' name. That none of us will go to hell because hell is not good at all. Thank you for saving us by a word in Jesus' name.